Meta just blindsided OpenAI and Google. Out of nowhere, they dropped the Llama 4 lineup. Multiple models, each more insane than the last. One model handles 10 million tokens. Another rivals GPT-4 using half the compute. And the real beast is a two trillion parameter monster still training in the shadows. So basically, Meta announced three major new models, though they've actually hinted at a fourth one too. And these are all part of this new Llama 4 series. The ones we can actually get right now are Llama 4 Scout and Llama 4 Maverick, while the monstrous teacher model called Llama 4 Behemoth is still being trained somewhere in Meta's data centers. They also briefly mentioned something called Llama 4 Reasoning, but Meta has been super secretive about that one, so we don't have many details yet. Let's break down Scout and Maverick first, because these are already turning heads in the AI community. Both are open weight models, which basically means you can download their trained weights and mess with them on your own hardware, though there are still a few licensing constraints. Like if you're a super massive company with over 700 million users, you need explicit permission from Meta to use them commercially. But still, this is considered a huge leap forward for open source AI because you can now self-host powerful large language models that have the potential to rival top closed models like GPT-4. People get pretty excited whenever there's an open weight release because it makes all sorts of new experimentation and custom fine tuning possible without forcing you to use an external cloud API. Anyway, Llama 4 Scout is the smaller of the two models, but it's still got 17 billion active parameters and 16 experts under the hood. And get this, it can run on a single NVIDIA H100 GPU, which a lot of developers love because you don't necessarily need a huge server farm just to make it work. But the real kicker is that Scout supposedly supports a context window of up to 10 million tokens. 10 million. That's ridiculous. People are joking that it's basically unlimited context because you could in theory feed it entire bookshelves full of text or even 20 hours of video data since it's also natively multimodal. It can process images and text together and the idea is that it could handle an insane amount of input all at once without having to break everything into smaller chunks. Of course, some folks point out that it might not produce top tier results on every single token past a certain smaller threshold, but the point still stands. It's a lot more than you'd see with typical context windows like 8K or 32K tokens. Then there's Llama 4 Maverick, which is more advanced and has the same 17 billion active parameters, but a whopping 128 experts. This is all part of Meta's mixture of experts, MOE architecture, where each token only activates a subset of those experts at once. It basically boosts efficiency and lowers the overall compute overhead, so you get a model that can match or beat huge param LLMs without requiring a monstrous GPU cluster. People are already comparing Maverick to GPT-4.0, Gemini 2.0, Flash, and DeepSeek V3. One set of tests from folks in the open source community indicated that Maverick is right up there in performance for coding tasks and general language benchmarks, though DeepSeek V3 might still barely edge it out in certain areas. But Maverick is apparently using about half the active parameters that DeepSeek V3 does, which is a big deal for cost and speed. The active parameter count is crucial since it tells you how many parameters you really have to load or process for each token generation. Now, Llama 4 Behemoth is the big star that everyone's waiting for. If you think 17 billion active parameters is wild, wait until you hear that Behemoth has 288 billion active parameters, with a total parameter count hovering around 2 trillion. That's just enormous. According to Meta, it's going to act as a teacher model, guiding the smaller Llama 4 variants and presumably shaping how they generate text or handle reasoning. Rumor has it that Behemoth might outperform major closed source models like GPT 4.5 or Claude Sonnet 3.7, especially on super tricky STEM tasks. But it's not ready yet. It's still in training. Nobody knows exactly when it'll drop, but hopefully soon, given how quickly Meta pushed out Scout and Maverick. One detail that keeps popping up is how widely Meta is distributing these new Llama 4 models. People can already grab them from the official Llama page on Hugging Face, 
and on certain HPC or AI accelerator platforms. Some folks have posted demos running Maverick on Apple's M3 Ultra Mac Studio clusters, basically hooking multiple units together to form these big lumps of unified memory. Because MOE models only load active parameters at runtime, you can theoretically cram a huge model into smaller memory footprints, though if you try to do the entire thing in full precision, you might still need a ton of memory, but it's kind of cool that this mixture of experts approach might let people run advanced LLMs on hardware that used to be considered totally insufficient. Meanwhile, user feedback is already rolling in about how Scout and Maverick behave in conversation. A few testers noticed that Maverick uses more colorful or fun language, occasionally throwing in emojis or dramatic pauses. Some people find that a bit silly or distracting, but because these models are open weight, you can actually fine tune them to behave differently if you want. That's part of the beauty of open source. If you don't like the cutesy style, you can adjust the system or prompt to produce something more neutral. Others are testing the code generation chops by asking for all sorts of Python scripts. Some folks tested it with a bouncing ball and a spinning hexagon prompt. Results vary, but apparently it's already on par with older versions of GPT-4, which is pretty crazy given that Scout and Maverick just launched. The general consensus is that while the new Llama 4 models might not perfectly replicate every advanced reasoning trick of GPT-4 or Claude, they're awfully close and they're cheaper to run. Speaking of cost, one analysis showed that Llama 4 Scout charges around 15 cents per million input tokens and around 40 cents per million output tokens if you're running it via certain hosting platforms. That's a fraction of the cost you'd see from some big name closed models. Maverick is a tad more expensive, but it still clocks in well below GPT-4's rates. It's a big deal for developers who want to manage cost and scale because it means they can keep bigger language models running without hemorrhaging money on API calls. Of course, there's a bit of controversy about whether you can really feed 10 million tokens to Scout and still expect top-notch performance. Some experts think it might not produce top tier responses for every chunk of that enormous input. Still, the possibility alone has people buzzing because if it even halfway works, you could theoretically dump entire libraries of text or hours of video transcripts into one prompt. That potentially makes retrieval augmented generation less critical because if you can stuff that massive amount of reference material right into the prompt, you don't necessarily need a separate pipeline with vector databases. Then again, doing so could be insanely expensive or slow, so RAG probably isn't going anywhere just yet. Most likely, we'll see a hybrid approach for a while. The other thing that's making waves is the fact that Meta is updating all of its own services with Llama 4. They're gradually rolling it out to WhatsApp, Messenger, Instagram Direct, and across the broader web. So if you're chatting with Meta AI in an app, you might be using either Scout or Maverick behind the scenes. A few folks tried dumping big prompts into the official Meta AI site only to discover the consumer-facing interface doesn't currently allow super long inputs. Still, the under the hood power is there, and if you host the model yourself or on an external HPC cluster, you can presumably do whatever you like with it. Industry reactions have been pretty telling. You've got Satya Nadella from Microsoft praising Llama 4 because Microsoft's been trying to diversify beyond just partnering with OpenAI. Google's Sundar Pichai also congratulated Meta, while Michael Dell jumped in to announce that Dell will be hosting Llama 4 through its enterprise solutions. Even big VC guys like David Sachs are celebrating it, saying that open source AI is the key for the US to maintain a lead in AI. It's all a reminder that we're in the midst of a crazy arms race among these big tech players, each one wanting to catch or surpass the other in large model capability. And it's not just about raw parameter counts, it's also about cost, efficiency, and what kind of ecosystem you can build around an open model. Ultimately, Llama 4 is here, at least partially, and it's already changing the open source AI landscape. From early tests, the performance is really promising, especially when you consider how accessible the models are. That's it for this one. Hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.